Hello and a big warm welcome to my Slim and World vlogs. My name's Claire Howard. In today's vlog, we're gonna be trying out the Kasori air fryer oven. I'm gonna be doing a roast chicken and I'm also gonna be cooking a Slim and World favorite, the Weetabix cake. Good morning and welcome back. My name's Claire Howard. If you haven't been here before, then a big, huge warm welcome. And if you're a returning viewer, then hello. It's lovely to have you here again. So if you haven't been here before, a lot of my vlogs are about just general day-to-day -day following the Slim and World plan. I am a busy mum of two boys and I follow Slim and World because it works for me. I've got to admit, just recently I've been following it quite loosely. I haven't been on my best behaviour but I need to get that back, 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 back on track because we have got some holiday coming up in May so I would like to be around seven pounds lighter so i went for weigh in yesterday and i did lose two pounds it's my first no not my first loss in a while actually last week i put on i didn't weigh last week the week before i'd put on half a pound and the week before that i lost a pound and a half so i'm actually now getting through the christmas weight gain just getting through the christmas weight gain quite well which is great um yeah so like i say another seven pounds i would like to lose for may just recently, like coming into the new year, Christmas, a house move, losing my granddad, it's just been very busy. And even though I find Slim and Well works great for a busy life, there's also just been times recently where I'm just like, stuff it, I don't care. I'm just gonna eat what I'm gonna eat. So my plan is to now get totally back on track. I need to be more accountable for what I'm having. I need to start keeping track of what I'm having. Excuse me, I have, to have just heated up speaking of food my rice pudding for breakfast this is probably a bigger bowl than i usually have because it's just everything that was left in there and it was too much to be too little to be two portions well for me anyway and um it's a little bit big for one portion but hey ho it's lush and this is the one i made in the last vlog using the coconut milk and i didn't use any sweetener in it i've just chucked a load of blueberries in and i've got no sauces or anything so you just need to sin or use your milks in that from your hex a allowance i did film or i thought i filmed a huge chat in the last vlog regarding the rice pudding and what to use because i always get loads of questions on that it's a really popular dish just because if you haven't watched it in a previous vlog then look it up the rice pudding is lovely there's about five vlogs on there that show you how to make it but it pretty much is milk. So you can use skimmed milk. I tend to use the almond milk. This Alpro No Sugars Almond Milk. This time I use the Alpro Coconut Milk. Now, this is off the top of my head, but just have a look on your app. I believe the Alpro milks are like 400 ml. I think the almond one is 400. The coconut one is 300 ml for your Hex A allowance. I use a thousand liters in there. So you've got like generally two, two and a half Hex A's in that you can also use skimmed milk then just work out your portions obviously to divide it by four three two whatever it is and work out what your hex a allowance is that you've got in there alternatively you can choose to skin uh, to sin that um i usually put sweetener in when i used the coconut milk the other day my sweetener had gone hard for some reason so i didn't put any sweetener in and you know what? i haven't missed the sweetener at all so i actually won't be putting sweetener in when i make it in future Generally, when I eat my rice pudding, I'm topping it with some fruits or I'm using my sweet freedom syrups or I'm always adding cinnamon, vanilla essence or almond essence also in the cooking process. So it's got that flavor in there. And when you top it with your fruit and syrup, the sugar that you put, the sweetener that you're putting in, um, it's only half a sin for the tablespoon, but it's not really needed. So I'm gonna miss that out in future. Anyway, getting sidetracked with rice pudding. Yeah, getting back on plan, that is what I need to do. So I've been on plan. I haven't been on plan great you know when those sneaky glasses of wine sneak in and the things that you just think oh it doesn't matter I've been good the rest of the day yes it's been a bit like that um so going forward what else did i have to say there was something i saw a minute ago and i thought yeah i need to speak about that oh but i can't remember so anyway today i've got a kasori air fryer oven to open and cook with i am doing a roast chicken this evening for dinner i haven't decided yet whether i'm going to do it with veg and gravy or whether i'm going to do it with jacket potato and salad it is quite nice like spring hence the reason i've just walked to school 
without my big puffy coat on and it hasn't been cold it's lovely out there i think yesterday did it get up to like 16 degrees which was crazy so yeah i think i'm gonna go right down the roast chicken jacket potato and salad route which will be really nice i love a roast chicken and jacket potato so i have this new 12 litre kasori air fryer um, you may have seen my other vlogs that I've made with the items that have been sent to me from Kasori. Now, I really wish they'd discovered me and sent this stuff when I didn't have a lovely big brand new oven. And I was struggling in a small kitchen because they're amazing gadgets. So this is literally an air fryer, but in the form of a small oven. So it's just great if you want to use it, probably a lot more cost effective than turning on your oven. It's got the advantage of being able to cook a lot of things that wouldn't always fit in your air fryer, depending on the size air fryer you've got. So you can do like pizzas in it, you can do like your roast joints of meat and stuff. Like I say, I am doing a roast chicken in it this evening. It does again have loads of functions. We've got pizza, rotisserie, bake, warm, um, proof, does that mean bacon? I'm not sure dehydrate, reheat, roast, air fry, toast and broil. So it does loads of stuff. So I'm going to get that open. I'm going to show you what's in the box in a second. I'm excited to try it out. Apart from my roast chicken, I might do a dessert tonight, you know, fancying a bit of meringue with some strawberries. If I can pick up some nice strawberries in Tesco's, which is where I may pop off to in a little while. Yeah, so that's me today. I'm going to get on and eat my breakfast. I'm going to go and get my food shop in. I need to plan as well because I've been off for three days. I have been really busy, um, but I'm now, I've now got my two long days at work. And those are the days where I tend to be worse on plan when it comes to food, because if I haven't planned, I get home from work and it's, you haven't got anything to eat, which is, as we know, a nightmare. So I have got some spaghetti bolognese mix in the fridge, which I'm going to take for my lunch for the next two days. But I do need to write a little list and get my groceries sorted out for when I go to Tesco's in a little while, which I'm going to do now. So I will speak to you guys later when I show you the air fryer oven and when we cook our roast chicken. quite a few accessories that go with this we've got two air fryer trays because you can double stack and have two things cooking on top of each other and we've also got a cooking tray we have got this which fixes in and then you can fill it with your chips or nuggets so it's like a rotisserie basket and it will cook them to a really nice crisp finish and then this is what i'm going to be using today to cook my roast chicken so it is a rotisserie fork for your chicken and then this contraption is so you can get it out of the machine so I'm really excited I've never done a rotisserie chicken before you've also got the usual user manual and there is some menus here which is quite good and also some tips which always come in handy and I think these kind of go for an air fry oven in general which is like keeping the door closed so you don't leave heat wrapping things up uh, more isn't always better and I'm guilty of doing that sometimes in my air fryer putting too much in and then you don't get that nice crispness which is what we want from our air fryer let's take a little look I've just put it over here I'm going to turn it on so all digital again that is a beautiful display and as you can see when we open up you've got your shelves this is where you're going to be able to put like your double shelves in if you wanted to cook a couple of items at once which is great isn't it like you can have your chips on one and your sausages or whatever you fancy cooking it literally is like having your own mini oven and then i'll show you more of this later but on this side you've obviously got where your rotisserie will fit in i haven't quite put my bits together enough but there you go and also that rotation will go in there So I'll show you when I get my chicken later. Okay, so I have just placed my chicken in here on the rotisserie. I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to go with roast. I'm assuming I press this button for the rotisserie. I'm going to do it 195 just for a little while to heat up. And we're going to go for... So 60 minutes seems to be the maximum set. And we'll do it for 60 minutes. Then I'll check on my chicken and see how it looks. Let's see what happens. So hopefully my chicken is going to rotate. Okay, so that is my chicken. I put it on an air fryer tray. I was gonna try and use the rotisserie function. My chicken's too big. I bought a large chicken and his legs were getting stuck as he went round. So I'm gonna say a medium chicken is the size you wanna go if you wanna use the rotisserie. 
going to put it on and go for 190 and do an hour. I will turn it down to 180 probably in about 15 minutes. And we are go. Just parboil some potatoes and I thought I had some chips and wedges seasoning left, but I don't. I can't seem to find it, so I'll just put a bit of Cajun on. They've been sprayed with some fry light and we're now gonna pop them in the oven after giving them a little shuffle up, agitate and make those edges a little bit crispy. Right, let's pop those in. And I'm doing some wedges and beans. Good afternoon, welcome back. So today I am making something that I have heard about in Slimon World for years and years and years. I've always thought it, it um, sounds rank. <laughs> but, but, um, one of our lovely Slimon World ladies who comes to group actually brought one of these in and she had sliced it up for us all to try and it was actually very, very nice. So it's something that I've since then intended to make, I haven't got round to it. So it is actually a wheat bix cake. And you will find this on the Slim and World app, but I am gonna go through and make it with you anyway. I'm going to be making it in my Kasori air fryer oven because it makes cakes. So I thought, why not have a go at baking in this? It's not something I've done in my air fryer, so I'm gonna be quite interested to see how this turns out. I am gonna start by turning this on and preheating it because I haven't actually read the instructions, but there is a preheat on this. So it does preheat first and then it comes up and says, add your food. So I'm going to go with, so my cake says preheat to 180 and it is an hour's cooking time. So I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with bake. I'm going to set my temperature to 180 and my time is an hour. But obviously that is going to require the preheat time so when I turn it on it's going to come up as preheat and then when that's ready it will tell me to put ingredients. my food in. Two Weetabix, 200 ml of skimmed milk, 100 grams of sultanas, 100 grams of self-raisin flour, one teaspoon of mixed spice, two level tablespoons of sweetener granules and two large eggs. Right so getting back to the recipe I bought myself a new loaf tin today and I have kind of lined it. Any tips on lining tins? Mine is very roughly lined with some greaseproof paper. So step one is to put the Weetabix in a large bowl and pour in the milk. Leave for two to three minutes and then mash with a fork. So I have my Weetabix here. I'm using the Asda chocolate Weetabix and these are two for your Hex B. So I'm going to go ahead, pop them in a bowl, add my 200 millilitres of skimmed milk and leave that to soak.
cooker is now telling me to add my food. And this time, our tray fits nicely in there. Close. And off we go. Again, you've got this light feature so you can check on your food while it's cooking. We'll see how that comes out shortly. Just having a little checkup on my cake. I don't want to open the door because as with most cooking, cakes tend to drop, don't they, if you open the door. I can turn the light on and look, that is looking good. Do you know, I pricked this with a knife a minute ago and I just think this cake is done. So I know air fries often cook a bit quicker than a standard oven. I feel that this looks very done. So on my head beer, I am taking it out with 25 minutes left of my hour's cooking time. But I think that that is just the variation between an oven and an air fryer. Definitely feel like this is cooked, but I'll leave that to cool for a little while and we'll take a look later. So I'm not going to lie, my cake doesn't quite look like Tess's does from the outside. I'm sure hers rises and is a lot thicker than mine, but we'll see. It smells nice. About to cut my cake. Important thing to remember, this cake is three and a half sins per serving and the recipe is enough for 12 servings. So this needs to be 12 pieces and they need to be pretty even to stick to your sins. Now, I'm not sure if I've overdone this a little bit, but I guess we will see as we cut into it. I'm gonna start by cutting it in half. As you can see, that looks quite yummy inside. So if I've done half, each of these needs to be six slices. This would have been much easier in my loaf tin, but that didn't fit in my slow, in my cooker, so. So this is roughly the size of your three and a half sin Weetabix cake. So let's give it a little try. Mm. It's really quite tasty. The closest thing I can compare this to is a bit like a malt loaf. Now, I'm not sure if the lady who bought this in Slim and World used a different recipe or whether mine just hasn't risen quite as much. Hers was a lot more light and fluffy. This is a lot more stodgy. I quite like stodge. Really quite good. Even though this is a Slim and World recipe, obviously three and a half sins, it does feel like having cake, but it's not a massive piece, is it? It is down to portion control with this, so don't think that because it's a Slim and Well recipe, we can make it and eat the whole thing. You can't. Three and a half cents per piece. It's quite a nice sweet treat. Yeah, I'd definitely make that again. So Mark's going to try my Weetabix cake. See what you think. Do you think it tastes like Weetabix? <laughs> oh, mm. <laughs> no, do you like it really? What's it like? Right. Bread. I thought it was a bit like malt loafy. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the vlog. I am off to Italy this weekend, but when I get back, I am on a mission to lose seven pounds. So if you want to join me, then please do remember to like and subscribe. See you in the next one.